It's time for Florida State football. This is Inside Seminole Football. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to Inside Seminole Football with Coach Willie Taggart. I'm Tom Block and Coach, congratulations. You get a 37-19 win over Northern Illinois. And I know after the game you said your football team got better. And though there's room for improvement still, you have to be pleased they took a step forward. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think that's the goal each and every week is to, is to continue to try to get better and work on the things that we're, we're not as good at and, and continue to get better at the things that we're, we're are good at. So, um, but, but overall, our guys found a way to win. Um, there's still a lot, a lot more improvement to make, and our guys understand that. And, and we can continue to make those improvements. I think we'll continue to get better as a football team. One thing that was different from how this year's unfolded, and really the last few years, a really good start. I mean, the first couple of possessions to be up 14 zip, it was crisp. Mm -hmm. um, our guys, uh, they were locked in, and they, were, they did a great job of executing. And, and uh, when we execute well, good things happen for us. And I thought in those two drives, it wasn't only execution, it was execution that was consistent uh, throughout the drive. And uh, we had some big run plays, had big pass plays, and. And, um, and guys just made play like they're capable of and doing it consistent, consistent was really important and, and, and made a big deal for us. The defense played well too. I know there's a couple big plays late in the game or one big pass play, but uh, overall you made them one dimensional, which makes it a, a much easier job for the defense. Well, absolutely, and that was the goal going in is to stop the run. Um, knowing Northern Illinois was a good running football team and our guys did a great job of, of stopping the run, holding them to, to six yards. and. Um, making the one dimensional, which you want to do as a defense. And, and then we got to take advantage of once we do hold, hold them in, in the running game and take advantage of the pass game and, and pin our ears back and, and get out to the quarterback. Florida State gets a 37 to 19 win over Northern Illinois. We'll take a look at the first half highlights right after this. Stay with us here on Inside Seminole Football. Welcome back, Tom Block, Coach Willie Taggart. Coach, beautiful day for football. It was parents weekend, and uh, you went out and offensively, I used the word crisp already, but it was uh, DeAndre was spreading the ball around. You were mixing the pass and the run. It really was well executed early on in that game. It was, and, and, and I think it all started in practice. Our guys made a commitment to, to practice better and, and harder than what they had been, and, and, it, and it paid off. I mean, guys came focused in practice, and those same guys that was focused in making plays made plays on those series. And, and it, and it just show our guys if we, if we do that consistently enough, we can be a good football team. And um, our guys, again, we did a lot of good things, but probably the worst thing, and you can't do it, is turn the ball over. And, and when we turned the ball over, and, and, and fortunately, we, uh, we got the win. But normally when you're playing a really good football team with those many turnovers, you're not going to win those ball games. Let's take a look at that uh, good start for Florida State uh, as we take you to Doe Campbell. Drew Gantz will put total leather and we're underway. Hooks it called the near, near sideline. It will go through the end zone for a touchback. In motion, Cam Akers running to the right. Shoulder up, post pass, caught ball by Kim Keith Gavin at the 47 yard line. The shotgun formation. Here is the snap, handoff to Cam Akers up the gut. Goes Cam, makes one guy miss, keeps his balance, gets the first down inside the 30. From the 28 second down and 10. And a jet sweep running to the left side of the formation. Florida State got a big gain outside the numbers to the 15 yard line. Trey Sean Harrison. Trey Sean Harrison, a true freshman from Seattle, Washington, with his first carry of his career. Tight end lined up, flexed to the right side, and the running back back there. Here's the pass to the near side. Caught ball, Keith Gavin got a cut for locker, but Gavin to the 10, made a guy miss and dives to the five yard line. That's a gain of 11 yards and another Florida State first down. DeAndre Francois takes the snap, drops, looks for the slant route. It is incomplete. It's caught! Touchdown FSU deflected pass into the lap of Jacquez Patrick. Wow! 
It re deflected by a defensive back off the hands of Keith Gavin, and he never broke stride. Jaquez Patrick gets his first receiving touchdown, I believe, of his career. They'll use that run option, look, the spread option, hand off up the gut, and there's nowhere to go. And boy, a booming hit from the right side flank. Reach the 35-yard line. Here's the snap, shoulders looking, pressured, pressured, under pressure, flushed out of the pocket, gets the pass up, they'll call it ball, but tackle right at the spot. First carry of the game results in a one-yard gain. Here's the snap, uh, play action fake, dropping back to throw. DeAndre Francois throws it upfield, caught ball in the 45, the Husky 45 to the 40-yard line. Crossing route run by Nyquan Murray. Back to that trip receivers to the left, out of the zone option read, pass to the left side, caught by Murray, got a block. Murray outside the numbers to the 30, spins to the 28, to the 27, fumble the football, but I think it's out of bounds. Hanging on. Ready to go. First down, snap, hand off to Patrick. He runs into a linebacker, into a safety. Still trying to get yardage. He's inside the 10. He's to the 8-yard line. Checks back into the lineup. Here's the snap, a little high. Hand off to Akers. Running outside. Got the coverage. He's to the 5 3 2 one. Touchdown, Florida State. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and Akers takes it in from seven yards away. That's how it's supposed to look, Gino. That's how it's fishing. This offense is supposed to look. And everybody's doing their job. Not big number. Here's the snap and a bubble screen past the right side. Caught ball, juggle, and out of bounds goes the receiver at the 27-yard, 28-yard line. Zone read, look, dropping to throw. Pressure coming, pressured out of the pocket, rolling to his right, throws toward the sideline, incomplete pass. Ben Knowles at the 42-yard line, a gain of 12. Plate fakes the jet sweep, now rolls to his left. DeAndre Francois may run with the ball. Francois to the 45, to the 50, slides at the 50-yard line. That's a gain of seven yards, nearly eight. And the tight end lines up on the left edge. Here's the snap, Francois Dobbins pressured, gets the pass, caught ball. Inside the 40-yard line, diving to the 44-yard, or 36-yard line, and very close to the first down is D.J. Matthews. Fourth down, Campbell, fourth down to one inside half. Jacques Patrick slams his way to the chalk of the 35. That should be a floor that he fumble the ball. Patrick went up over the top, and the turnover, a takeaway by NIU. Covered by the defense. Into the Northern Illinois 35 yard line. Here's the snap. Childers looks, gets the pass away, throws it downfield deep, and a receiver in the area and throws it just a little bit too far. Marcus Childers at quarterback. That zone read look, dropping to throw. Childers looks upfield, flushed out of the pocket still, gets the pass away, caught ball, and oh, drop to the 37 yard line. Did he fumble the ball? Does it belong to FSU? It looked like an incomplete pass, and it is. Line moving left. Good snap. DeAndre Fran, quick pass to the left side, caught ball to the 40-yard line, to the 45-yard line, and Keith Gavin has a Florida State first down, out to the 45-yard line. Can we convert third down and three? Got to reach the 44-yard line. Inside handoff, it's to Nyquan Murray. He's got to run into a tackle to lose yards. Marcus Childers, the quarterback, takes the snap, going to throw all the way, looks to his right, now come back to his right, it's a ball, got a screen, convoy in front, running across the field is D.J. Brown, and he'll be tackled. Our second down, 10 moving right, the snap to Childers, looking left, still looking left, still looking left, those left, it is a caught ball, but a tackle made, my goodness, a collision at the 46-yard line toward the south end zone. Here is the snap, dropping Childers, looks one way, now back to this side, throws to this side, it is a caught, oh, drop ball! 20 for the 14 yard line. Here's the snap. Francois Wolfo across the middle. Caught ball. Nice grab and a first down achieved at the 12, 17 yard line by DJ Matthews. The line of scrimmage is the eight yard line. High snap. Caught upfield and down. It throws a ball to the right side. Caught ball on the right flat by Trey McKitty. McKitty fumble the football. Picked up by a defender. And the Huskies have come up with a second turnover. The ball is still alive apparently. Now a tackle made. Zone read look quarterback. Childers takes the snap, drops, looks to throw toward the end zone. Post route, near corner, incomplete pass, and the receiver fell down. He awaits the snap. Here it is, looks to his left now, pumps the goal, puts the ball toward the end zone, far side of the field. It is a caught ball, touchdown, Northern Illinois. And the Huskies have dug into that 14-0 deficit. So they go nickel against the Knowles, 14-7 score. Francois pass, deep pass down the near sideline. Caught ball, inbounds at the 35, to the 30, to the 26-yard line. Over the shoulder catch by Kemp, Keith Gavin. Francois, Francois expects pressure, and here it comes. Hits protection, looks upfield, throws the ball upfield. It is too tall to be caught. Here's the snap, a good one. The spot, the kick is airborne. Aguayo's kick is flirting with the upright, and he made it through. It's a good field goal, and the Noles are up 17 to seven. Moving left to right, Marcus Jones, the running back, hand off to Jones. The tackle made a bubble football. It's loose and recovered by the Huskies. Chops something to his center, awaits the snap. Here it is, they'll run a draw play, conservative call, running to the left side, Noles bracket that draw play and stuff the run at the 22-yard line. 
the snap. Gets the kick away, a rugby type thing, knuckleball, could be returned by DJ. Makes the catch at the 37 yard line, gets to the outside, cuts it between it. He's to the 50, to the 45, flag though. Oh. He's to the 42, he's to the 35 yard line, and DJ Matthews is snagged at the 36 yard line. Formation with a side card to his right hip, the snap, he's gonna throw on first down. Braswell under the caught ball by Patrick, it is Jaquiz Patrick, and he gets a gain of nine and a half. Francois awaits the snap. From Everly takes it, looks to the left, throws to the left, caught ball, Gavin to the 40, to the 38 yard line. First down 10 of the 38 acres, the sidecar pass to the right side, caught in the right flat by McKitty at the 30 yard line. He's knocked backwards and acres in motion way out to the left. Here is the snap, dropping Francois gets the pass away, caught ball, drop ball at the third 20 yard line. In and out of the mitts. And a tight end to the left. Here's the snap. Francois has protection. Throws it back. Near side line. Caught ball at the 25 yard line. Spinning around is Gavin. Inside the 20 to Treshawn Harrison. 88, not 89. And he's got a first down and has some wiggle and move. Knowles lead 17 to 7. One more. High snap over the head of Francois. Francois is going to try to pick it up. Dive on the ball. Knowles do. But all the way back at the 34 yard line. The snap a good one, the spot, the kick is airborne. Aguayo's leg is long enough, it is long enough, it is long enough, it's good! 51 yard field goal, as time expires in the half. Aguayo two for two, and the Knowles go into the locker room with a 20 to seven lead. Coach, those were big points just before intermission on a long field goal. Uh, you know, a week ago you failed to get points just before intermission and for uh, really twofold. You get points, but also Ricky stroked it well on Saturday. That was great uh, uh, for Ricky. I mean, you just think about our football team had been struggling. Ricky had been struggling. And, and for him to come and, and get that before halftime, I thought that was gave him a lot of confidence, gave our football team a lot of confidence. And, and it just helped us um, continue to have the momentum in the game there. But it was really good because that was the same um, same hash. He missed a field goal um, on a couple weeks ago, and for him to come back and make that was, was really good for us. Well, and he wound up three for three on the day, and all were dead center, solid, mm -hmm. good for another eight to ten yards. So obviously he, he's feeling good right now. He is, and he's been working at it. You know, he's, he's been doing a good job of, of, of kicking in practice, and, and not only that, he took the initiative to come over to the stadium and kick in the stadium a little bit. And mm -hmm. Hopefully that helped and it paid off for him. Florida State with a comfortable lead at intermission. Second half highlights still to come. Stay with us here on Inside Seminole Football. In 1995, Florida State received a gift from the football heavens, one that would ultimately help FSU remain ranked number one for an entire season. Peter Warwick, famously known over YouTube as the most elusive college player, was more than a definition of agility and speed. Off the field, he's also a caring son who chose to come to Florida State to fulfill his mother's dreams. Looking wanted to throw the knockout punch to Warwick. Warwick open! Cannot make the catch. Flags thrown to the one. Touchdown! He did catch Touchdown! It. He did catch it. Touchdown, Florida well, State. You know, it was on the sideline, and uh, Coach B asked me, "What play you want to run?" And I said, "Hey, Coach, I want to finish him." He said, "You want to finish him?" I said, "Yes." He said, "Throw the ball deep to the Peter Warwick, how'd you do that? I see you, Peter Warwick. What a play! I knew I was going to make the play. I knew that. Florida State. 43 yards, and Peter Warwick, a night of redemption, his third touchdown of this championship game. Peter and I uh, kind of grew up together, and uh, we were always on a rival team, whether it's Little League or high school. Coach Taggart and Peter Warwick were competing high school quarterbacks for rivals back in Bradenton. So they were great competitors, but great friends. And their rivalry meant a lot, but I think they really, uh, really like each other. Playing against Coach Taggart, you know, it was a great honor because he was one of the best people that came from Bradenton. And, you know, I just respect him, not only as a coach, but as a person. Peter certainly could have become an NFL top draft pick after his junior year. He wanted to fulfill a promise to his mom that he would graduate from college. He also wanted to win a national championship, but 
He came back for his senior year and he did both things. Now, Peter, yes. you could have gone to the NFL after your junior year. Tell us what motivated you to come back for that senior season with Chris Winkie and your teammates. Uh, really, I came back because we had just lost the year before against Tennessee. So I made up my mind that I wanted to come back, not only to play football, but to do something that my mom wanted me to do, and that's graduate. Yeah. Give a shout out to Doug. You know, he's a great guy. And by him having me on there every time, like I told him, whenever he called me, I'll do it. It's just a great honor to go out there and see your fans, the people that you know, your family. And when I go out there, I just feel like I'm at home. As an all-time leader in receiving touchdowns, two-time consensus All-American, and three-time first-team All-ACC, Peter Warwick's influence was legendary. His dexterity was a magnet to FSU fans, and his legacy lives on at the Sod Cemetery. Coach Taggart wanted Peter Warwick to find out about his jersey retirement in front of the current football team. 19 years later, the retirement of Warwick's jersey did not go on without the blessing of 2018 head coach Willie Taggart. For him not knowing that that was going to happen, it was, it was pretty cool to see just the, how surprised he was about it all and then and just how grateful he was. Coach Taggart wanted his players to see a legendary player he wanted his players to see that person and his reaction to becoming a true Seminole legend. With my jersey being retired, I think, I think I'm going to tell him to put number nine up until he get here. I'm Alexandra Wendling with Inside Seminole Football. Back on Inside Seminole Football, Coach, you had a 20-7 to lead at intermission. And one thing you reflected on after the game is that you really stayed committed to the run in this game. We saw that in the, in the second half, and, uh, and it set up a big play, as it turned out, too. It did, uh, and, and that's something we, we wanted to do, something we need to continue to do, um, is, is try to run the football. And, and, again, we didn't run it as well as we, we need to, and it can be better and in a lot of aspects there. But um, I do think it helped us big time. I think about the time of possession of having the football and keeping our defense fresh. And, and then it also um, allowed us to, to get behind the defense when um, they were so committed to stopping the run. And, and, and Tamari and Terry and, and DeAndre Francois did a great job of executing on, on the deep ball there um, to help us get going. We'll take a look at that deep ball and all the second half highlights right now. Out wide is D.J. Brown. Now he'll come in motion, fake the chest sweep and hand the ball off on a draw play, and there's not much running room. They needed three, got maybe one. Childers awaits the snap now in that gun formation. Takes it a little low, hands the ball off, and they'll run the ball up the gut, and no stuff it. I don't think he got the first down. Needed two, maybe got ahead for one. Blitz threatened, none coming. Francois gets the pass away down the near sideline, intended for Murray. K makes the catch. What a great grab by Nooney Murray at the 45-yard line in this game so far. First down 10 from the 45-yard line with the football running to the right. Cam Akers got outside the numbers and run out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Moving right, the Husky 33. High snap handoff again. This is John running the ball. Cam Akers inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Pressure against 43-yard field goal attempt. Good snap, the hole, the kick is long enough, and Ricky Aguayo has three for three. Field goal is good. And it's 23 to seven with 427 to go. Special teams doing their thing today. The ball moving left, 426 to go. Pass is caught at the 31 yard line, trying to fight off, and wiggle off the hook and gets a first down with great second and third effort. FIU starting from the 25, gets a first down game. And under pressure, Childress is sacked in the backfield. First quarterback sack of the game. We send to Cat Blitz and quarterback Kyle Myers. Five yards on the Seminoles, first on the defense in a while. Dropping back to throw. Childress throws it over the middle. Caught ball at the 40, to the 35, middle of the field, to the 25, to the 20. Nobody's going to catch Northern Illinois. Touchdown Huskies and D.J. Brown on third down and 13. 
Harbison is the setback side guard to the right. They hand the ball off. It's a throwback to the quarterback running with the football. Trying a little razzle dazzle play to the three to the two. Not going to get the point after touchdown. Third, second down, seven. Here's the snap. They end around. They hand the ball off. And Treshawn Harrison, I think, is going to run the ball. Makes a guy miss. He's to the 40, spins to the 40 yard line. Shin offense. The snap a good one. Pass to the near side, caught by DJ Matthews. Matthews cannot get away from a quarterback on the right side. Awaits the snap, and here it is, dropping the throw, and he's going to run the ball. Marcus Childers spun around, dropped as he reaches back to the line of scrimmage. Here is the snap to Childers, looking over to his left, firing to his left. It is incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary. Out of that power pistol look down, second down, 15. He takes the hand off and running for his life. Francois, he fumbles the football. It's cobbled up by Northern Illinois at the 28-yard line. Quarterback sack number two. Sends a receiver across the formation, takes the snap and looks left. Still looking left, dips the shoulder. Now looks for the post, nothing there. Flushed out of the pocket, running to his right. Still running. He's going to get side out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Jones. Here's the snap and dropping to throw. Childers looking toward the end zone. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his right, still rolling. Those toward the end zone. It's a caught ball. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. The officials talk it over. Huskies with an apparent touchdown that would make the score 23 19. The incomplete pass. The receiver stepped out of bounds but did not reestablish really himself. The fourth down. Two against Iowa has made three. Here's a high snap. The spot good, and the kick is long enough, and it is no good. He missed. Line. Here's the snap. Play action fake. Francois dropping, dropping, throws the ball. Deep ball downfield. He's got Murray. And caught ball of the 30 to the 25 to the 20. 15. Tamaria Cherry's got a touchdown. Turn him loose, coach. Turn him loose. And Francois throws a bomb. That's what I'm saying. Attack. You got man to man on the outside. At some point, you got to say, my receiver is better than your defensive back, and we're going to get the touchdown. Great play. Northern Illinois, the snap out of the gun, dropping Marcus Childers, finds a wide open receiver, crossing around, around the 40 yard line. Outside the numbers, he goes to the 50 yard line and run out of bounds. Right, here is the snap. Childers looks right, passes to his right, caught. Oh, juggle ball, almost picked off. Away from him. Fourth down and four. Here is the snap. We run a delay blitz, pass underneath. And is it a caught ball? Is it a caught? No, ruled incomplete at the 30 yard line. Running back now. Noel's take over at the 43 yard line. Our 43 handoff to Patrick slams off right guard, gets a gain out to the 48 yard line. There to the left hip this time. Here's the snap. Handoff to Patrick. Oh, no, he did not hand off of the oh. pass. Intercepted pass by a linebacker with the 50. Back to the 45 yard line. Into the Seminole 40 yard line to the Seminole 38 yard line. Florida State with a four, four, four man front, dropping back into coverage. Pass to the near side. Caught ball on the 30 yard line. Inside the 30 to the 26. Here it is, and he'll drop, looking good. Now he's going to run the ball. Quarterback draw play to the 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Husky. Turnover, Costas. They get the touchdown. Now do they go for two? Probably will with 8.01 to go. Cost them. Oh, the snap to the holder. It's a bad snap. They go for two, and the throw was in the end zone. It is picked off in the end zone. Two-point try fails. From the 19-yard line, third down long, inside handoff to Patrick. Breaks it open to the 30-yard line. He high steps into the 35-yard line. Out of the shotgun formations, third down and 11. Here's the snap. Francois, quarterback draw on a delay. Runs it to the 40, spins around to the 42, does not get the first down. Two yard line, moving right. Huskies and White dropping his shoulders, looking downfield shoulders, dumps it underneath, caught ball at the 28 yard line, run out of bounds from their own 35 yard line. Drive started. Here's the snap. Dropping shoulders. Uh, Pass on just behind. Tried one fourth down conversion and failed. Here's the snap. They got to reach the 45. Childers under some heat. Under some heat. Looking under pressure. He's got to be sacked. Dropped by four Seminoles at the 27 yard line on fourth down. Knowles will take over. 25 yard line. Second down. Seven. Moving left. Inside handoff. Rasul follows the blocker. Finds a little daylight. He digs his way to the 21 yard line. At him work number 45. As an H back handoff on third down to two, Amir Rasul gets the first down, needed two, and he got fired to the 15 yard line. Power formation out of the shotgun, inside handoff. Rasul falls a block, pops outside, inside the tip. He made a guy miss, and he dives to the seven yard line. Francois awaits the snap, takes it, hands it off. Rasul running to his right, the five, three, two, one. Touchdown, yeah. FSU. Amir Rasul, that's for you, mom and dad, on Parents Weekend. Rasul punches it in, and the Bulls are up 36 to 19. That's the way you finish off the drive, and that's the way you finish the game. You need those big plays. And here's the snap, probably the final play, barring a penalty, and under pressure, Childers running out of the pocket. He'll go down. He's sacked at the 18-yard line.
Knowles beat Northern Illinois. 37 to 19 is your final score. Amir Rasul gets the touchdown late. It was good to see that. But Tamari and Terry, that play really broke things up. And that, was, that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And, and he just uh, continues to look like a really physically gifted receiver. He is. He, he's very talented. And, and again, um, um, great ball by DeAndre and, and great catch by him and, and great run after the catch, you know. And um, he's a special kid and, and, and can be really, really good. And, and we got to continue to find ways to get him the football. And, uh, when he touched the ball, good things happened. I think he had eight catches on the year and like three or four touchdowns, something like that. So mm -hmm. um, we continue to find ways to get him the football and good things can happen for us. You also got the football to a young receiver in uh, Treshawn Harrison who looks like he might be electric too when he's got that ball in his hands. He is. He, he's, he's a kid that um, that's really good with the football in his hand. And um, we saw a little bit of it in training camp and he's only continuing to get better as he, as he each week go by, he gets reps, and, and uh, it was good for him to go in the game and have that success that he did. I think that gave him a lot of confidence. The end result, Florida State gets a 37-19 win over NIU. The Knowles even their record at 2-2. Two two. Get back into conference play this week uh, on the road again at Louisville, and we'll talk about that matchup when we come back during Inside Seminole Football. Welcome into Inside the Headset. I'm Katherine Phillips alongside Offensive Coordinator Walt Bell. You are a four-year Leatherman at Middle Tennessee State. You earned two degrees from there. When did you know that you wanted to be a coach? Uh, as a young kid, 12, you know, probably even younger than that, you know, 10, 11, 12, I knew I always, whatever my job was, I wanted to be in positional leadership. So whether that was a coach or in the military, um, that was something that was always attractive to me. But when I went to college, you know, my great granddad, granddad, dad, they were all doctors. I went there to do pre-med and tried to convince myself, you know, to do that. And then uh, probably two or three years into college, you know, my dad kind of said, you know, make sure that you're doing what you want to do with your life. You know, I think some of that may have to do with him possibly being unhappy as well, you know, you know, trying to do what his dad did. And so, uh, you know, this kind of, you know, led me to this path. You know, I pre-enrolled and tried to get ready to go to law school, but day I got done playing, one of my favorite coaches that I ever had in my life, Blake Anderson, who's you now head coach of Arkansas State. Um, you know, kind of called me the day I got done playing and said, hey, you want to come GA? And, you know, I figured I can go to law school anytime. So put all my stuff in a Ford Bronco and drove to Lafayette, Louisiana. So a lot of you guys will say that there's someone who impacted them, who made them want to do this. Was there anyone in your life that made you think, I want to do for young guys what he did for me? Yeah, and that, that, that's Blake. You know, I was very fortunate, you know, to play for a lot of great football coaches. Um, Blake Anderson, Larry Fedora, just to name a couple. Darren Henshaw, Kentucky. You know, I, I, I had a great playing experience, but Blake Anderson for me, you know, uh, you know, my father passed away in 2008, and Blake to this day, you know, he's the guy that, that kind of is, you know, my new dad. You know, and as a football player, you know, he was as important to me as my own dad. Made me a better human being, um, made the people around me better, and really because of him, just like you said, kind of inspired me to want to use this game as a platform to help help people, you know, and, and better people's lives and their experiences, you know, through football. And so, uh, you know, a lot of that is, is due to play. In 10 years, you've made quite a few stops. Oklahoma State, Arkansas State, Memphis, UNC, quite a few schools. In all of those different experiences, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, you know, e each of them kind of bring, a, you know, a, something special to the table. You know, a lot of those, you know, I was at you know, Lafayette as a GA, um, Memphis is a GA, Oklahoma State really is GA, and then, you know, got hired full-time at Southern Miss, and because of winning and, and doing well, you know, fortunate enough to kind of move and, and do other things, but um, each one kind of brings something special. You know, at Memphis, you know, I thought Tommy West and Clay Helton, the OC at the time, just their rapport with players and, and managing people. Um, you know, at, at Oklahoma State, Coach Gundy, same thing, just in, in the organization, how well that that he runs that program, you know, really in a place where it should be really hard to win. Um, Larry Fedora, you know, the, the organization, the efficiency. Um, DJ Durkin, you know, uh, again, the big, the recruiting piece, you know. So we, each guy kind of brought something to the table that I hope to add and, and carry on in my career, and, and hopefully that can really help us here, you know, and help me do my job to the best of my ability for Coach Dagger. 
Describe yourself as a coach. Um, you know, number one, I, I think the most important thing in any aspect or any walk of life is authentic. You know, I want my guys to know that I'm going to be the same person every day. And then number one, you know, is that I'll always tell them the truth. You know, whether it's rough love, tough love, or love love, it'll all be love, but it's all going to be the truth, you know, and making sure that those kids understand that you're always going to tell the truth. Because if they know that you'll tell them the truth, that's when you can start to build trust, you know. And then number two, um, you know, kind of the second thing I always promise our guys is I don't care whether you play a million plays and have a million yards or play zero plays and help a zero. That, that we and myself, I'm going to invest in you the same way and ensure that when you leave here, you're a better person. So in terms of a coaching style, you know, I think it's our job as coaches is to be whoever they need us to be. You know, and sometimes that's on a day-to-day -day basis per individual, but, uh, you know, just authentic. I'm going to tell them the truth and I'm going to care about them either way, you know. And uh, I think if you can do those three things, the kids will do whatever you want them to do. And then you went straight from your playing career into a coaching position. Obviously, if you're not coaching, you're out recruiting, you don't have much free time. If you ever get some downtime, what would you be doing? Uh, downtime for me, I, I really don't have very many hobbies. Um, and part of that's because I love football, and part of it's because I'm really not good at anything else. Um, so, you know, right now for me, you know, I, I love to be with my wife, Maria, uh, and spend as much time as we can together, even though it's very small, before we have children, that time becomes even less. Um, and then I'm a huge fight fan. So, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, watching fights on TV, whether it's, uh, you know, Marie and I, you know, this summer, you know, went to Vegas for a, a UFC card. And, but we're, we're a big fight family and football, and that's about it. So Maria likes it too. Oh, absolutely. Well, she doesn't have a choice. She's <laughs> kind of stuck with it. But I, I think because she sees the enjoyment that I get out of it, I think she kind of feels like she has to be a part of it too. So it's something that we can share and, uh, you know, but spending time with her, that's, that's really, other than football, that's about it. That's awesome. Well, that's Coach Walt Bell. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kendall Herman, and I'm a student assistant for the Sports Nutrition Department here at Florida State University. Thanks to my Bright Future scholarship, I'm able to dedicate all of my free time to the athletics department completely on a volunteer basis. This opportunity has allowed me to work alongside of our director of sports nutrition, where I'm not only having fun on the sidelines, but I'm also learning a lot of valuable skills for my future career as a sports dietitian. I could not be more proud to do the work that I do, and I want to thank the Florida Lottery for funding my bright future. Today's X's and O's segment is presented by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Today's X's and O's segment is the third quarter. Um, we run a pass play, run, set up by the run play early in the game. Uh, we've been running the ball, staying committed to it, and the safety had been playing down. In this case, the safety didn't necessarily come down, but he didn't get back. Uh, to his part of the field and DeAndre did a great job of reading him and seeing it and, and uh, we throw a post route to Tamari Terry who, who did a great job of running past the defender and, and catching the ball and run after the catch here. And that's today's X's and O's segment. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Back on Inside Seminole Football, Coach, you're, you're back on the road this week and uh, against a Louisville team, and uh, obviously you're going to focus on the Cardinal, but you're going to continue to focus on your team because you need to continue to make incremental improvement every week. Well, I think that's the most important thing is, is, is that we focus on us and, and continue to work on the things that we need to improve on. And, and that's going to always be the case. And I think as long as we focus on us and then improve on the things that we need to, uh, we'll see a better football team. And our guys understand that. And um, this week, uh, we're going to focus on those things again and, and prepare to go out there to try to play our very best football, which we hadn't done yet. And that's mm -hmm. the challenge each week. And I look forward to seeing our guys go out and seeing if they, if they can do it this week. 3.30 kickoff coming up from Louisville as Florida State takes on the Cardinals. We'll come back with some final thoughts momentarily.
Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Catherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson. He's the executive culinary director of Seminole Dining here on the campus of Florida State, and he's going to walk us through a delicious tailgating recipe today. Chef, what you got? Today we're going to do a real traditional New Orleans recipe. Your favorite. Uh, it is one of my <laughs> favorites. Uh, shrimp remoulade. And we're going to do the white remoulade. Traditionally, there's a white or a red. Let's get started. All right. We're going to start out with the shrimp. And so we start out, we chose uh, a 1620, which means there's 16 to 20 pieces of shrimp per pound. So they're a little bit bigger. Uh, we all always use golf wild caught shrimp. And so we're gonna start out with the shrimp and put them in a bowl. And we need to season them. So we have a bit of a Cajun blend mixed up with some paprika, some chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of black pepper. And we'll lightly dust these. We just wanna make sure that they're coated real well. And then while those sit, we're going to start up our cast iron here on low heat. And we need just a little bit of fat to cook these shrimp on. So I'm gonna add some butter to this. And then uh, as this is warming up, we're gonna go back and start on our remoulade. The white remoulade base is a mayonnaise base. Okay. So we put in a classic ketchup. And as we add these, we're just gonna whisk them together. All right. Next, we're gonna add a Creole mustard. The Creole mustard is going to give it a lot of depth and flavor, adding just a little bit of spice. Next, we're going to add fresh herbs. So we have our garlic, our parsley, our green onions, our minced celery. I'm pull all these together. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And then to add that heat and a little bit of a kick to it, we have some horseradish, and then a couple dashes of Tabasco. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> some fresh lemon, and some white wine vinegar. And we're gonna mix this up really well. Now we're gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna let it cool down for about 20 or 30 minutes. Now let's go back to our skillet here and start on our shrimp. So I've fired the skillet back up on a medium heat and I'm gonna start dropping the shrimp on. You can see we've evenly coated all of the shrimp with that Cajun blend. Now you're cooking this on natural gas, so what's the advantage of that? Well, I like to use cast iron a lot when cooking and natural gas pairs very well with that because you can really control the heat. Okay. And so for this application here, you know, I'm looking for more of a medium heat because we're going to lightly bronze the shrimp. We don't want to cook them uh, too quickly. So natural gas allows me to control the heat a little bit more when I'm cooking. And so those are going to cook for anywhere from 30 to 40 seconds on both sides. Okay. All right, that shrimp smells wonderful. And it has a good bronze color to it. You can see the butter and all the seasoning. I'm gonna pull these off and put them on a sheet pan because we wanna cool them down because this dish is gonna be served cold. What's really nice is you can build this out. Uh, you can make the remoulade a day in advance. Uh, it only gets better in time. So okay. the longer it sits, I'd say up to about a day is what you're looking at there. Okay. So we have these beautiful Gulf shrimp. Lightly bronzed, and seared on that cast iron with the natural gas. This is a real traditional white remoulade. It's going to complement it very, very well. Just a little bit of aromatics on top. What do you think? Well, it looks beautiful. Should we taste? Let's do it. All right. You still have the tails on, so if you grab it by the tail. That's good. Mm -hmm. It has so much flavor. Well, for full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, you used a word on Saturday, revert. And what the team can't do now is revert back. You've got to take from where you are and move forward. So I know that's a point of emphasis this week. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think our guys will, you know, as long as we continue to practice the way we did last week and 
again, start focusing on the right things. And um, I saw a lot in our guys this, this past weekend that was really impressive to me, um, especially on the sideline. And uh, no guys are moaning or complaining about anything. There's so much encouragement by guys that no normally uh, moan and complain. They were <laughs> they were supportive and, and playing their role, and, and, and it made a huge difference in our football team. And I thought it was good that they saw that within themselves, and I think that's going to help our team going forward. Coach, I'd be remiss if we didn't bring up protection because we talked so much about it a week ago, and it was it was certainly better this week against NIU. It was, um, and, and our guys um, uh, worked on it really hard uh, last week. And again, it, it wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better. And, and, and guys played with better technique and, and uh, strain through blocks to really help us get some balls out. And um, with a lot of those young guys that hadn't played a lot, when they continue to get reps, they're going to only get better. And, and we're going to need that again this week. All right, and congratulations on the win. And Thank uh, you. best of luck this week, Florida State and Louisville. 330 kick on the road. We'll have a look back next week right here on Inside Seminole Football. Inside Seminole Football has been brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe.